Logan's off on his own, somewhere halfway up an active volcano. And we're about to go trespass on property guarded by barbed wire and armed guards. And we're gonna die if we're out here. Oh boy! This is living! Down inside. All right, Michael, tip number one about getting shot at, make sure you zigzag. Guatemalan lava panthers. Logan, what are you trying to get out of this trip? I want to figure out how to get better coffee and bigger variety of coffee into exclusive coffee subscription. The exclusive coffee subscription is a layer inside of the coffee club, but you get a much higher end coffee source from different parts of the world. So we got an Ethiopia and we're doing a Guatemalan here soon. So we want to come down here, cup some coffee, talk to these people and bring back those green beans to the US. Get that complete picture from field to cup. Give people who love Black Rifle coffee a really cool story about where that's coming from. You're gonna meet the producer. When you say producer, what's a producer? So producer is what in Spanish we call finqueros. He owns the farm, directs everything in the farm. They're the owner, the boss. How much of this coffee that they grow out here ends up actually making it into somebody's cup. The average, it would be like 60%. Antigua is antique. So it's one of the older areas of Guatemala. It was originally uh, Guatemala City back in the 1800s. We're going to go hit a couple coffee shops in the city and then we're going to punch up to a coffee farm. And one of the things that makes Guatemala so unique in its coffee production is this volcanic soil. I'm with my friend Freddie, who's actually kind of our, our coffee shepherd. He brought us over to this uh, Fat Cat Coffee House, yeah. which is supposed to be really good. Well tucked in coffee shop. What's that? So we're doing the uh, yellow bourbon, for, the yellow catuai first, and then she's going to make a siphon for us so you can get B-roll of that. Cool. The yellow bourbon or the catuai? Let's do it. Let's do them both. All right. So do we just, should we just dive in? We just dive in. All right. Wow. That is kind of fruity. It is. Here you can taste up front the sweetness, the sugar cane. Yeah. And then the fruitiness of peaches, prune, and dark cherry at the end when it lowers your temperature. I do I do get a little bit of that prune. I have trouble distinguishing on the other notes. But Antigua is surrounded by volcanoes, so we have farms at the bottom of every volcano that's around the city. So that helps uh, the nutrition of the plant and for us to be able not to use as many chemicals mm. of the, in the production of our coffee. We are at El Potero Farms in Antigua, Guatemala at a beautiful coffee farm and the owner Juan Carlos has been nice enough to give us a tour of his facilities. So let's go meet up with him. Juan Carlos, thank you so much for having us out. You're welcome. Uh, give me the rundown on this place, man. Okay. So the, the farm has been in the family since 1912. So it's around 108 years. Are currently producing specialty coffee. Our fertilizer, it, it's organic, it's natural. That comes out of our own coffee. The start to the end of the process, everything that comes out is used for production and for fertilization. Can we go see the whole operation? Yes, please. We'll go through the entire process. All right. Hello, my name is Marty Scovland. I'm here in Antigua, which actually stands for Land of the Coffee. You saw a velociraptor. There's live volcanoes. We're going to make some coffee over lava. I'm actually going to ride a bike through the lava. <laughs> All right, coffee origins. How was coffee originally discovered? Going back to around 800 BC, these goat herders in Ethiopia discovered that their goats were eating these cherries and they're all caffeinated up. Their goats were running around all crazy. So they're like, what is the deal? They started investigating these and they figured out that within this coffee cherry, there's a little bean. And eventually they got to the point where they were roasting this over an open fire, eventually made a tea and hence, coffee was born. You can see on this bush here, you've got a lot of different stages of, of growth here. 
So it starts off in the green coffee cherry, and then once it gets to this point where it's that super bright red, that's when they know it's ready to be picked. And what they were saying earlier is that they'll actually like crush the cherry and measure the fructose levels in this to make sure that it's perfectly ready to be harvested. What they used to do before they had the refractometer was, you got like it? Really? It's super sweet. Me conseguís dos más que está delicioso esto. This is what ends up becoming green bean of coffee after it's dried, and then that's what gets roasted. So you'll see the wet mill right now? Yeah. You're gonna see all the process, how it's washed, how it's depulped, how it's washed again, mm -hmm. and how then it's dried. Oh, so good. What we have here is the higher density beans go through and they continue on the path. The drier beans and less dense beans they float, so they move to the side. So good coffee goes in, bad coffee goes away. Really more than anything, it's just the start of the depulping process. And then if you follow this stream down, that's where it goes to get depulped, which is where it removes the coffee cherry from it. And then they'll rinse it one more time, which is what you see right here. And then it's ready to be dried. That's where the depulped coffee beans are being dried out. So they gotta sit out in the open sun for a certain period of time, and then they back that up. I think I've learned more about coffee today, just today alone, than I have like my, the rest of my life combined. Now I, I'm kind of thinking about everything that I know about coffee in a different way now that I know the process and the care. How many people yes, do you employ here? Like 300 jobs. 300, wow. Significantly more enlightened about coffee than I was before I showed up today. And you're cool. way lighter too. Yeah. Yeah, you've definitely lost weight, which is the most important thing. Yes. All right, so we came out to this volcano. It's an active volcano. Literally just two years ago, it was responsible for killing 2,000 people. We wanted to get some drone shots of it. Logan and I, we put our drones up in the air. Long story short, we lose them. Uh, the drone got disconnected. Now it's moving away from me. What the fuck? I think this is where the road ends anyway. Yeah, so Logan's off on his own, somewhere halfway up a active volcano, and we're about to go trespass on property guarded by barbed wire and armed guards. This looks like a friggin' damn Star Wars set. I hiked what I thought was a mile, but this whole place it's just nothing but friggin' ravines. There's no worse place this could have happened. Fuck! Let's go down fast so they don't see us. Alright, Michael, tip number one about getting shot at make sure you zigzag. I think it's right up here. It's gonna be easier for us to go down and get the car and just go back up. Alright, let's do it then. Bad news is I didn't find the drone. The good news is I don't have to charge the batteries for the drone. <laughs> so we got 15 minutes of sunlight and we're gonna go find the drone through the bushes. So let's go. Do we have an estimate about how far away yeah. it is? It's like right over here. In distance. I'm just saying we're about to enter the middle of the jungle and we're about 15 minutes from dark. Oh yeah, it's gonna get real spicy. Watch the jacket. You guys stay right here. Yeah, it sucks, but it's part of the adventure, right? Did you find it? Yeah. It's a good day. I can't believe you did it. You boys ever hear of Guatemalan volcano panthers? They're like a panther, but they're from Guatemala and they breathe lava. I just tackled one. He was guarding the drone, but I took him down. Didn't want him to my buddy Logan, them Guatemalan fucking lava, lava panthers, come out of breath. Five Guatemalan lava panthers will take you right out. There's one thing you learn in South Dakota is how to cross a barbed wire fence. Do we have any water in there? down inside.
Logan's graduating from an eight pack of Crayolas to 16 pack. <laughs> oh yeah. We'll be at that 32 before Ooh, you know boy. it, buddy. <laughs> maybe, maybe one of these days, one of those 64 packs with a little crayon sharpener inside. Yeah. Oh, I'm, I, I gotta get the sharpener, baby. <laughs> I, I gotta get the pack big enough so Holy. I got that, that macaroni and cheese color, you know? <laughs> We're,